What up, though, everybody? This is Kyle, and if you're new here, you are watching Knockouts and Three Counts. And in this video, we're going to be going over the big news that WWE Network has been sold to Peacock for $1 billion. We're going to be joined by the homie Ken Brass of Sound Off Sundays and a past guest to this show to get his thoughts from a fan's point of view and uh, give my thoughts on what I thought, you know, fresh off of learning the news of WWE going to Peacock and what that could mean for NXT, what that could mean for the impact of not having WWE talked about on ESPN and more. So if you're new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and stay tuned. What up, though, everybody? This is Kyle, and you are back here watching Knockouts, Three Counts, and... I brought a familiar face back to come chat with us tonight. We've got the man behind Sound Off Sundays. If you're here from the Detroit area, Mr. Brasshole himself, Mr. Ken Brass. How you doing, brother man? What's going on, bro? Y'all good? Hey, I'm good. There's a lot of a lot of things in the works for knockouts and three counts that uh, you guys got to just stay tuned to find out. But I mean, hey, man, we're here because there was some pretty monumental stuff going down in the world of pro wrestling, I would say. Uh, yeah, game changer. Right. So for those of you who are living under a rock or just haven't seen what it is, as you can tell from the title to this video, we're going to be talking about the acquisition for Peacock of the WWE Network, which came at a pretty price tag of $1 billion. Now, at $1 billion being the price tag for this, Peacock is getting $1 billion. Uh, anyways, yeah, man. So $1 billion price tag. Obviously, WWE got paid out of this uh, with the acquisition. That means 17,000 hours of content is coming to Peacock for the WWE Network, along with, according to this article, it says starting in 2022, there's going to be an annual yearly documentary uh, put out on Peacock for the network. Um and like I said, that also means that as we go into WrestleMania season and all these things, obviously this isn't going to take effect before this Sunday's Royal Rumble, which you need to make sure that you're checking us out live this Thursday at 7 o'clock on Facebook as we're going to be giving you our Royal Rumble pre-show picks, predictions, all that good stuff as we're going to be joined by the homies from Breaking Down the Ring. So like I said, you want to tune in for that because you never know what you're going to get. So Ken... Now that I've flapped my gums and kind of gave some of the parameters <laughs> to what we're going to get in this Peacock merger with WWE, what are your thoughts on them going to Peacock? First, I mean, I was like, at first I was like, what? Because, you know, you see stuff floating around on social media. So we were wrestling fans, so we all follow each other. <laughs> so you see the same article like 17 million times. But then I sat there and read it. I was like, well, billion dollars. I mean, duh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Money talks and bullshit walks, and a billion dollars is a lot of money. Right. With a B. B, not a, a M. A, a B, motherfucker. You do this with the B. You got to do this. A B, motherfucker. But honestly, when I thought about kind of the history of things, I know NBC has been wanting WrestleMania Live for years. Well, I mean, they, WWE they, has they their wanting, history with Eversol. Because they want that advertising money. I mean... WrestleMania is pretty much Super Bowl Junior. Oh, well, pretty much. I, hell, I would argue, to be honest, man, and you can attest to this too. You know, you go to all these events just like I do. Yeah. So, I mean, I would almost argue that the way that WrestleMania takes over a city is level. I would say that they're bigger than the Super Bowl in a lot of ways because Super Bowl is cool sure. while you're down there, but dude, WWE takes over for like the whole week. And now yeah, at this like, point, the whole wrestling and... world has like followed suit. So now you have all the indie stuff as well. That's true, because WrestleMania weekend is like, we literally own whatever city that it's in. We own it. All right, so total sidebar. Now, if you guys follow our social media and you're watching this as a playback, as you can see, Mr. Brass and I have linked up at WrestleManias before, as you can see in this picture. There's the picture of us out in front of MSG after the uh, G1 Supercard. My question is, how many WrestleManias do we got to go to before you and I just, like, coordinate this shit to where we actually link up? <laughs> Well, shit, we got to get past this fucking Rona shit. <laughs> well, my part of the Wii is not trying to go to WrestleMania this year. So this will be the first one in the last four years that I'm sitting out. But I have every intention of going to Texas because Devin 
lives in Texas. So yeah, that's a, that's a no brainer. Damn right. Go. I got, I got the hotel taken care of. We got the car taken care of, and then I can buy a more expensive ticket. I'm in there like swimwear and we're going to be back in Texas on February 12th for Pele pro wrestling This past guest of the show. The seven mile destroyer, Isaiah Broner is coming out to Texas with us. So like I said, you need to make sure you check that out as past guest of the show. Sam Adonis will be going to war on fight TV against triple a superstar psycho clown so we're gonna have a lot of stuff yeah man we got a lot of stuff going down on texas so we talked about you know the possibility of having wrestlemania on peacock i mean what are your thoughts on the overall move from a pure fan standpoint do you like it do you not like it would you have rathered them stay on the wwe network like what what are your thoughts on the merger because the reaction that i'm seeing is you're either getting the optimistic side of people where you got people who are like, yeah, man, this is dope. You get all the TV content along with, uh, you know, WWE and all that as well. But then there's the flip side to it. Do you think wrestling fans, well, the diehards will, but do you think that this is going to be a good move in that it'll attract uh, non wrestling eyes? Or do you think people will really go that far to search it out? I mean, honestly, from a, a fan standpoint, it kind of sucks that we lost something that was ours, I guess, if you want to put it that way. I but, can see that. But from a business standpoint, that's what it's about, getting more not get more of the casual fan into WWE programming. I mean, you got to think about it. The office is strictly on Peacock now. The office is a huge wave of fans within itself. There's like save by, a new Save by the Bell I heard is on there. No, yep. stuff like that. So I and heard, I heard like, they're supposed to be like a Sex in the City remake or some shit, or that might be HBO Max. But yeah, but I'm saying, but it's always like streaming is the way of the future. I mean, there's no yeah. way to put it. You got Sling TV, you got Hulu, you got Netflix, you got fucking Peacock now. You've got, uh, I mean, Amazon Prime. There's a million different streaming services. I mean, what? So here's the question. All right, so we're talking about you know, WWE is going to Peacock and yeah, that means the pay-per-views are going to be on there, which in reality, that's not really different from, you know, what we've already been getting with the pay-per-view model with it being on the WWE network. Yeah. But, but here, here's the, here's the bigger question, right? So from what I'm reading in these articles, as of now, they say NXT is going to stay put where it is. My question is what kind of impact do you think that this is going to have on NXT? Because as we know, NXT and AEW go head to head right now on the Wednesday night wars along with this merger. That's also been said that the NBC sports network is going to close down. So with that closing down, that means hockey is going to have to get a new home. So with hockey needing a new home, hockey night is usually Wednesday in the States. So my question is, even though they say that NXT and raw are going to stay in their normal time slots. Now I don't see raw getting moved at all. They've been there too long. Yeah. NXT though, that's a different story because well, NXT does numbers, but hockey is proven. Yes, hockey. <laughs> like hockey is proven, okay? And hockey is still a big sport, whether people want to say it is or not. I don't watch nearly as much as I used to, but I could very well see NXT getting bumped off of the Wednesday night time slot. Now, before I get your thoughts. I'm just going to throw this out here. That might not be the worst thing in the world because even though the thought as wrestling fans, and this is where the wrestling nerd in you comes in, obviously the thought of there being a Wednesday night war, you know, for all of us that grew up in the eighties and nineties, I mean, obviously we all want to relive the heyday with the Monday night wars and the Wednesday night wars, the closest thing we got to it. But me personally, I think if NXT got off Wednesday, it would be great for both nxt and AEW, because then people there i feel like there may not be such a divide on um there may not be such a divide on um oh i'm an AEW guy oh i'm an nxt guy yeah oh you watch wwe well what happened to we're all wrestling fans and we were fans of all the shit like what happened to that that's the thing you know and again Full disclosure, you can call it jocking, you can call it whatever you want. I listen to Busted Open Radio a lot of the time, and it's something that David Greca talks a lot on about on their show. Why can't we just be fans of everything? If NXT right. and AEW both prosper, 
it's like wrestling fans can't get it through their fucking head that them prospering and doing well and all the companies doing well means that the business as a whole is going to do better, which means all your indie darlings that you bitch don't get on TV have more places to work. There's more of a spotlight. There's more eyes on wrestling. And here's the thing with them going to a network like Peacock, they're going to be exposed to a lot of non wrestling fans. So I don't really see where it's a bad idea, but I'd love to hear your thought on just a fan's perspective on what are your thoughts on all this divide we see between I'm an NXT guy. I'm an AEW guy. Oh, you watch WWE. You're a fucking shell. Hey, they're fucking dumb. Flat up, no, it's flat out period. They're dumb. Like you said, is wrestling is wrestling. Like personally on Wednesdays, I watch NXT live and I DVR AEW. So I watch them both on Wednesday. Kind of be a little, it can kind of be a little of a stretch because I'll be getting sleepy. But I, I usually watch it. one, I usually watch AEW live and then I watch NXT back after. Yeah. So like if NXT, and I'm see NXT is going to get the boot. It's hockey, the NHL, it's the NHL. Whatever NBC is paying for broadcast rights are going to trump NXT. So and you got to remember, happen. Peacock is an NBC stationed, like NBC has ties into Peacock. So, I mean, that could definitely have something to do with it, too, especially if they're coming over from an NBC sports network. Yes. I mean, so at the end of the day, and honestly, even if they don't bump it because Peacock is technically streaming, you can still put hockey on USA. And it well, still can be so on from the specs. Streaming. So from the specs that I see in the article, as of right now, it's being reported that what it looks like is they're saying NXT and Raw are going to keep their time slots, but the replays are going to be on Peacock. I mean, I can see that for now, but at the end of the day, like you said, we know hockey is Wednesday night. Wednesday night hockey, that's been, that's the thing. Well, and if you think that they're not going to try to home all the stuff that they're going to lose from losing the NBC Sports Network, you're crazy. Right, that stuff's got to find a home. You know what I'm saying? So end of the day, sports are sports, man. We can say what we want as wrestling fans, but as a sports fan myself, I mean, like, look, dude, I want wrestling to prosper. I would love to see a day where we could get back to a place where wrestling could be as prominent as it was, or as talked about as it was in the nineties, but I don't really see that happening anytime soon. And in reality, in a in a time period like we're in in 2021 where most of your content is going to come from streams or youtube or you know different streaming services or whatever i mean more and more people are getting out of cable so to me i've been out of it five years (laughs) right right and that's my point and so here's the thing i just feel like to me this is another situation of where i feel like wrestling fans are being too close-minded very like, I, mean, I don't understand I how it. we can be in 2021 and people still can't understand. But to me, if you're a true wrestling fan, this is great because this gets them in front of more eyes, which means they get more eyes on the show. More eyes on the show means more attention. And hopefully, you know, hopefully let's put it this way. Okay. We've heard all this talk about how USA wanted more um, uh, mature content for raw you know, because they weren't happy with the ratings. What do you think Peacock is going to want when they come over here? You think that they're not going to tell them, like, look, bro, we need you guys to come out fire, especially with a billion-dollar contract? Why do you think Fox got on their head so hard? I mean, honestly, ratings is money. Like I said, we're talking about billions of dollars of money at this point. Billions would it be. Ratings matter. Advertising matters. If you don't have ratings, you can't get advertisers. You don't get advertisers, you don't get your money back that you pay to get rights to certain programming. It's all about the bottom line at the end of the day. And I'm sure with Peacock, they're probably not going to have that. I don't know how it works on streaming as far as they have those restrictions as far as PG, TVMA, worrying about the family-friendly stuff by being streaming versus on TV. That's my only worry. Like, that's, I mean, look. I don't think we're ever going to get back to a place where I don't think that we're ever going to get back to a place where things are really ever like TVMA or even oh, TV, no. or even TV 14 necessarily so much for wrestling. Uh, I, 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 I just don't see a day where I really could see that happening again. But I mean, that being said, let it's there's still so much unknown right because it all depends on how peacock wants this to roll out 
because on one hand you could have that side like what you're saying where because it's a streaming service you know maybe there could be a little bit more edgy content but on the flip side with them being an NBC based thing I could also see them wanting to stick to more of the PG route as well here's my other question do you think that going to Peacock was the smart move I asked that because before we hit the record button we were talking about how um we were talking about how you know, ESPN seems to not be such happy campers that WWE is going to Peacock. Apparently they've known for the last three weeks. Now with the coverage that that's going to now take away with, you know, them not being with ESPN anymore. My question for you is, do you think that Peacock was the smartest move or do you think that the, you know, pissing off ESPN could maybe hurt them in the long run? From a business standpoint, ESPN is owned by Disney. To me, from a business standpoint, you don't piss piss off Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse has got all the money. Not some of the money, all of the money. Granted, NBC is owned by Universal, owned by Comcast, another big conglomerate kind of thing. So I get that, but it's still... I don't have anything in front of me to say like who's worth more, who has more reach. However... I'm never going to argue against Mickey Mouse. So I don't think you should go about pissing off Mickey Mouse. But granted, you got a billion dollars from NBC. So maybe Mickey Mouse didn't want to pay that much. But I think just from like the last couple of years, ESPN definitely put, hope WB get a lot more reach. I mean, you had. I think a lot of that had to do, you know, and I, and it it's funny that we're the, at the time we're doing this video, I just finished watching, listening to the interview between Chris Van Vliet and uh, Jonathan Coachman. I think a lot of the reason why ESPN was giving them more plug was because of the light that coach was shining on WWE. I think coach did a lot of good things for them with ESPN and opening that door. And that's why I asked that question, because here's the thing, you know, if there's one thing WWE always wants, it's to be looked at more legitimately. They can say that they're getting away with it from sports with a sports entertainment standpoint that they're not trying to really go pro wrestling, but them getting seen on the number one sports channel in the world, ESPN or the most recognized, like if their moments are getting noticed on a, uh, you know, on a sports center basis, that's good plug. So, I mean, it's such a weird thing. And I guess only time is going to tell. We got to see how this merger goes, you know, and how it looks. But man, I just, it's, it's interesting because I mean, I feel like ESPN would be a good look, but at the end of the day, how can you argue with the business of it when they made a billion dollars? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just like I said. I think ESPN did a lot because yeah, think about it. Us as fans, whoever would have thought at some point we would look up and see like WrestleMania interviews on ESPN, WWE champions doing live interviews on Sports Center. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something we didn't see back in the day no and or at I, least you haven't seen it since the awa days when they used to run on yeah, espn like we were all we were little kids at that point shit <laughs> i wasn't even a thought yet <laughs> no i was like very very little like i barely remember that stuff like i, shit, was I wasn't even a thought i didn't even come around <laughs> the 92 man i was coming around right when rick flair and uh rick flair was doing his thing with a tear in his eye yeah so like my thing is like it was cool to see that kind of stuff just as a fan you know, a long time fan to see that was just cool to see. Like you had Becky Lynch, Roman, Charlotte doing interviews on Sports Center, seg W segments on Sports Center talking about the pay-per-views. They were doing live broadcasts on WrestleMania. What was it? Um during WrestleMania 35 weekend. They had a sports center set out there. You know what I'm saying? Like that was stuff we've never seen as fans. So I agree. And see, that's why like away. I agree. And that's why, like, for me. It's like, on one hand, I totally understand it. I think it's a great business move, obviously, financially. Uh, but even even from the standpoint, like you said, I mean, there's a lot of non-wrestling fans that are not going to see it, on the, that are now going to see it. Uh, on the flip side of that, obviously, like I said, that's where the ESPN thing is so... It, it, it's so weird, man, because it's like, on one hand, it's cool, you know, that they were doing that, and now you're taking that away, but... I mean, only thing I can think of unless is, I mean, unless because I know NBC is closing the sports channel, but NBC Sports is still a thing. So unless NBC Sports is about to kind of take over that kind of avenue, 
they kind of make WWE a part of ESPN Sports and do shows dedicated to it. Well, that's having, NBC. Like, that's the thing. ESPN, ESPN separate. Yeah, I mean, so like you're gonna have things like Al Michaels at Sports. I mean, at WrestleMania or something. I don't know, but <laughs> I mean, hell, dude, it makes for if nothing else, it makes for you know interesting. You know, imp- interesting combinations. Well, before we get off this video, you know, it's a timely and topic thing for us to talk about as well. Um, you know, you mentioned that you watch NXT live and then watch AEW tape. Now, see, I do the opposite. I watch AEW live and I watch NXT taped. Um, my question for you is, do you... so? Do you think that this is going to be a, do you think this is going to be really damaging uh, to NXT if they have to move? And secondly, secondly, again, with what we were talking about of the division of the fans uh, with the AEW NXT thing, um, what are your thoughts on what we're seeing on this? I guess you call it Wednesday night war or the battle between NXT and AEW. Do you think it's healthy? And do you think, do you think that we as wrestling fans, because I have plenty to say about this and I will, as soon as I get your thoughts, but do you think that we as wrestling fans need to, for lack of a better way to put it, shut the fuck up and enjoy what we're seeing. You just read my, you just read my fucking mind. I swear to God, that is the key. Shut the fuck up and watch the fucking shows. Like seriously, there are two different. There's so, there's two shows. They're both good. They're different. Pro, they're different types of programming. Just set up and enjoy it and watch it. Be a fucking fan. Set up being a fucking mark. Like shut the fuck up. Like, like I really look, enjoy both. I that's that. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. And the reason I asked that is because I completely understand why people don't want to watch Raw live all the time. Look, Raw is hard to watch. A at a of three hour. Am. At a I'm three hour time. <laughs> Right. <laughs> You're multitasking as we're doing this video and proving my point. Um, like Raw is hard is a hard watch. A because of the time pe- time slots and B, let's face it, they have some things that I'm interested in, and then there's other things that I just don't understand. Yeah. But I mean, here's the thing. I feel like we're seeing such a backlash on oh WWE fucking sucks, WWE fucking sucks, AEW, whatever. Okay. That's cool, but if if we're really being objective here, NXT's been damn good. Yeah. SmackDown, SmackDown, I would go as far to say, is now the WWE show. By far. So, I mean, any fucking mark that wants to say that SmackDown hasn't been good, you're not being objective, sir, because that it's Roman Reigns shit is gold and they still have oh. my, a lot of miles they can get out of it because you still got to tie in Jimmy Uso you still got to tie in all that kind of stuff um and I guess big, my and the big and the big fish that's dangling out there when they're gonna link him in the rock you know it's gotta happen I hope so I hope it's so man I, I, I mean dude this year would be the perfect year for them to do rock versus Roman if they brought rock in I don't know that the I don't know that the Royal Rumble would be where they do it but hell, dude, I would, I mean, I would love to do that. I mean, so before we get out of here, I mean, again, with that question, I mean, what are your thoughts on what we're seeing with all this, all these people bitching about, you know, who you're a fan of, who you're not, like you said, you know, just shut up and watch the shows. But to me, to me, here's the thing. Either shut up and don't watch it or, or, shut up. or you know, <laughs> like, here's the thing, like, all your bitching does is really hurts the wrestling business as a whole, because right. if the fans are complaining, then that doesn't look good to TV reporter or, you know, TV carriers and all that kind of shit. And the thing is at the end of the day, if there's one thing I've learned through doing all these interviews and doing these shows and all that, it's that we as fans really don't know shit. Like, I would like to think that I got a much better understanding now from getting to know more about the business, but I mean, let's face it in real in realistic terms, fans don't know shit at all. I think people just bitch the bitch. We're in a, we're in an area of the era of people like to bitch this, the bitch because they got the social media, honestly, but I mean, my thoughts as a whole, I agree with you. It's kind of hurting because the bitching to an outside person, what does that help? 
I mean, I granted everybody has an opinion. You may not like how and have your is. opinion. That's what makes wrestling great. But I feel yeah. like the overwhelming majority you see on Twitter, like holy shit, Twitter was like one of the best and worst things to ever happen because now <laughs> you can talk to them all at the drop of a finger, but you realize how like bro you realize how dumb wrestling fans really are. And this is coming from a wrestling fan. <laughs> I'm just saying some of the shit that they comment on know. there. I'm like, did you not wa- look what you type before you, before you hit send? Like I, it, it's insane. It, I, it sounds like we're both on the same page with this. So. Yeah. So we're, last, best, we're wrestling fans with sense. <sighs> we're real wrestling fans. I think is what it boils down to. If you're a real wrestling fan, you should be enjoying all the different content that we're getting. Well, last but not least, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you your chance. Who do you, who do you got to win the Royal Rumble? And I'll give you one pick at a surprise. Um, Big E. Wins the Royal Rumble? Yeah. Okay. Um, a surprise? And I know I'm wrong. However, just the the fact that we talked about fans bitching in Twitter to watch the bitch storm, CM Punk. Do you think they would bitch? I think that would be one of the better things WWE people, could do. People still bitch about CM Punk chance. <laughs> Look, man, I, I don't – CM Punk I don't really see coming back. I know. Well, like I said, I know it's, it won't happen, but it would just be – for it's the asshole that I am, just to be able to watch people bitch. The brass hole that you are. The, the laugh at them. Just to laugh at the bitching that would occur. Oh my God, he said he would never come back. He only came back because he dust in UFC. He's such a hypocrite. It would just be funny for that part alone. Now, in the Women's Royal Rumble, honestly, that shit's wide open. I don't, there's really not a clear direction. Um, Bailey would be, if I had to pick, I would say Bailey. If I had to pick. Okay, so you're picking Bailey um, for the women's, Biggie for the men, and who's your surprise going to be? Um, for the women, any of them. Um, I mean, honestly, because not, I mean, it's not really nobody out there, honestly, that that I can think of that would make sense per se. I mean, because the biggest thing that was kind of out there was like happened last year was Edge, and I don't think we can't top it oh you can't top that especially with there not being fans this time like i was watching like um on raw i guess edge is gonna do an interview at some point in time they re kind of replayed the thing and i got goosebumps all over again dude like, that's edge, one of those every moments. time edge comes out i still get goosebumps bro but that royal rumble like i when that shit happened that was just make like we were on and fucking um b-dubs <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that shit was bananas. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a moment you don't get back. You know what I'm saying? So from a surprise standpoint, I really don't. It's not nobody really out there that's been away for a while that jumps out to you. Yeah, that I can really think of, unless I'm just not. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, cause, I mean, because mostly everybody that's kind of bigger, if they're not in WWE, they're technically in AEW or New Japan, unless they unless. No, I just thought about something. If it's true that Jay White's contract is expired, if that's not a swerve, that could do it. All right, so you've heard his surprises. And to hear my picks, I'll give you one little spoiler. I think I think uh, a surprise that we're going to see in this Royal Rumble is we'll also go with uh, – my female pick uh i'm gonna go with rhea ripley but to hear the rest of my picks you've got to tune in this set this thursday almost said saturday this saturday (laughs) fucking a man now i sound like gold dust having his spasms with booker t speaking of booker t now you got to stay tuned to that social media because boy do we got some nice things coming for you guys from your boys at knockouts and three counts and like i said make sure you tune in this thursday seven o'clock See who the fuck we think is going to win the Royal Rumble. And we are going to be joined by the homies from Breaking Down the Ring. So if you've been following us for any bit of time, you never know what the fuck can happen when we all get the same room. So (laughs) make sure you watch this shit live because we already have Smitty and Z confirmed. 
Hopefully we'll get Mikey with us too. So if you've ever been to any of our parties at B-Dubs, like Ken has, he can tell you, you don't know what you're going to expect. So until next time, hey. and in the in-between time, make sure you're here with us live tomorrow, Tuesday, 9 p.m. on Facebook. And like I said, our Royal Rumble preview will be coming to you live this Thursday, also on our Facebook. So until next time, and in the in-between time, peace. Peace.